All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is shut off the water to your house. And you're gonna wanna shut it off at the street because if you shut it off in your house, it won't catch your irrigation typically. So go ahead and shut it off at your water meter using a water key like I have here. Or you can use a pair of channel locks, which I'll show. I mean, you can't always, but a lot of times you can. Or like a crescent wrench with like channel locks on the handle. Some sort of combination. Um, you can pick up a water key at Home Depot or Lowe's for pretty cheap. Uh, and you just go ahead and turn the little valve inside there to the right and usually there's little eyelets and they line up and the, and the uh, valve will stop. So that's the PVB that I have now, the uh, anti-siphon shutoff valve for my irrigation. This is the new one we're putting in. It's a Wilkins 720, I believe. It's the best one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just what we put in all the time when I was a plumber. Uh, it's like the most common Wilkins, Watts, that type of thing. You're going to want channel locks, screwdriver, pipe cutters, Teflon tape, Teflon paste if, if you want to do both like I do. Um, and then you're going to need two males, three quarter inch by glue. You know, you're going to glue the other end. Uh, three couplers, four 90s. Then you're gonna want some PVC glue. I like Christie's Red Hot Blue Glue because you can use it when it's wet. Um, and then you're gonna want some primer to clean the pipe and you know get all the residue off. A piece of pipe and some insulation. I just opened the water hose to relieve some pressure, and I got some gloves to keep it clean. Go ahead and dig up some pipe. You don't always have to. A lot of times they put those uh, valves above the ground. Um, but if it's not, you know, dig it up so you can expose some pipe. And you can use some sanding paper or some plumber's cloth like I show there. It's like mesh sanding paper. It has holes in it. And, uh, you know, clean it as best as you can. You're not going to probably get it perfect, especially if it was underground. It'll be discolored. Uh, sand it up though, you know, get any glue drippings off or anything like that. Next, take your primer. Um, the kind I use is purple. Mine's really old, so it's like a brown color. Um, it'll usually turn your pipe purple, and uh, that's not a bad sign. It, it lets you know that you applied it on there. But in my case, it just kind of turns it brown. But what it does is eat like any chemicals on the outside of the pipe and any residue, takes it off and cleans it up and gets it ready for the glue to adhere better. Go ahead and primer every part you have. Use the primer on the um, couplers on the 90s. You're going to put primer on everything before you glue it. Basically, you're cleaning cleaning it off. It's like paint remover or something. Go ahead and take your pipe cutters. Go really slow so you don't crack the pipe. I just go a little bit at a time, and then you start to wiggle it. And it'll, it'll cut through. Mine are really old, so i got to be a little ginger with it. Once you get both sides cut off, you're going to want to... Um, Determine which side the water's coming out of so turn on your water meter just a little bit Otherwise, you're gonna flood that hole out and then see which pipe it's coming out of so in my case It's the back pipe is the incoming line and the front pipe goes to the irrigation And um, I kind of try to show you here that it's flowing out. Um, I just have it on barely a little bit All right, this is the new valve and, um, you know, plumbers can charge anywhere from like, shoot, 200 to $700. There was a time where they were bursting in Las Vegas during a cold front, a really cold winter. They, they always burst. The little diaphragm at the top, that black cap, they burst uh, when it's freezing temperatures. And um, you can repair just the diaphragm, but 
typically a plumber will try to get you for the whole valve, you know. Well, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Honest ones would just change the diaphragm, but they still cost a lot of money. Okay, go ahead and Teflon your males, and I use both tape and pipe dope or liquid Teflon. Um, you, you don't need to use both, but I like to. Uh, you're going to thread those into the new PVB. Your Wilkins 720A, three quarter inch PVB valve. Pressure vacuum breaker, I believe. Um, go ahead and get them started by hand, you know, hand tight. And you can use the valve itself for leverage. You don't have to back, back it up with your channel locks like I usually show in other videos, but I mean you can grab the valve with the other pair of channel locks instead of pressing down with your hand. But it's kind of like an L shape, so you can kind of use it like a like a tool, you know. Uh, get them pretty snug, but don't go too tight or you will crack the males. <coughs> I mean you want to go tight enough, definitely. You don't want no leaks, but don't go too far. Take your time. All right, it's looking good. And now um, I cut a piece of pipe. I'm gonna raise these uh, the lines from the ground, you know, so they're not so low. Typically on these nicer valves, they're higher up above the ground. So I'm gonna extend both of those um, lines. And that's why you have the couplers. So go ahead and take, oh, let's see what we do here. <laughs> yeah, take your coupler. We've already primered everything. I primered that pipe as well on both ends. You just, I just didn't show you that. And then, um, Put some glue like I said that glue will work even if there's water that's why I like it a lot of a lot of valves don't shut off all the way so you're definitely gonna want that kind of glue if yours doesn't um, I'm just cleaning this back one up a little more all right and now we're gonna put it together like a puzzle and um, I believe I show you the direction of flow. There's arrows on this new valve that show the way the water flows. All right, all right, I just wanna pause for a second, show you guys the flow of direction. So the air, there's arrows on this valve that show you which direction the water flows and it flows out towards the outgoing line. So make sure that arrow points towards your outgoing side. And, um, if you already had one like this installed, you would just replicate it. But um, a lot of times you'll have that older valve like I had. Um, so you're gonna have to turn the water on a little bit and see which side the water comes out kind of a thing, you know. So I'm just making pieces and a primer and everything, kind of fitting it together like a puzzle. And I'm raising up those two those two lines on that front line I put a 90 you'll see how it works uh, you could raise it up you know uh, but you'd have to have that back one even higher and you you're gonna see how it all fits together so you're gonna want some sort of a combination of what I'm doing and I mean I've had them a foot you know I've had them higher off the ground and lower off the ground and shorter in the front it's just how it works out for you uh, how your setup is. Sometimes your pipes are farther apart, so you don't have to do as extreme as what I'm doing. But um, So I'm gluing a piece in there, and that's why you got the 90s for that front part. And I haven't glued that valve on yet, I'm just pushing it on to uh, fit things, you know? So take your time. You can dry fit everything before you glue it. I just kind of know how it goes together, so I'm gluing things as I go. But if you've never done it, I would probably recommend not gluing things and get everything cut to size first and measured up. Um, 
and you'll be safer that way. This is probably the longest process, especially if you're putting this nice one in when you didn't have one like this, you're kind of having to make it, make a new setup, you know? Because the other one, the line just came straight up, but this one you gotta go over. There's always like that front piece on the on these kind of valves, where it's like a U shape with the pipes. It's easier to watch how I'm doing it than for me to kind of explain it. It'll make more sense. I, I used that little piece of pipe. I didn't glue it in the 90. I just stuck a piece of pipe in the 90 that I glued down there um, so that I could make it straight up and down. And then you just pull it out. You'll see that I, I'll do it again. Okay, now I'm raising that back line up. Let's see. See how I glued a 90 down there on the front? In order to make sure it was straight up and down, I had a piece of pipe not glued in it, you know, as I glued the back part. So we're getting pretty close, getting close to the last 90 here. It'll be a little different for every setup, but the concept's the same. Again, I have a piece of pipe in that 90 that's not glued to make it straight, and I pulled it out. Now we're basically ready to go. I'm basically gonna glue it on like a top, but you have to do both sides at the same time. So you have to be kind of fast, especially if you have water coming out like me. My valve doesn't shut off all the way, so put a lot of glue. Make sure you glue, get a lot of glue on there, and then go real fast. Press them down, hold the bottom pipe so you don't break any pipe. And then uh, we're gonna give it, we're gonna clean everything up, clean your area up, dry everything off, you know, wipe any excess glue. And then we're gonna leave it to dry for about 10 minutes. I would recommend, if it's colder, I would leave it even longer. Um, the sun helps it dry, you know, the heat. So 10 minutes in the sun, but if it's like winter time, maybe like 20, maybe even 30. I've had these things blow right off. <laughs> Not many, because you learn your lesson really quick, but I think maybe one or two. I don't know. And I've had other plumbers where that's happened. All right, we've been 10 minutes. Checking for any leaks. And there probably wouldn't be anything right now because the water's still off. But I don't know, I was just checking. Okay, I'm shutting these valves off just so I can check for leaks at every point, you know, sectionally. We're going to go turn the water on here. Always go slow when you turn your water back onto your house. It's uh, 70 pounds per square inch, so it's like a freight train coming through your water pipes. And if you go too fast, you know, you can compromise any weak spots. So go slow. I had the hose on, remember, so I turned it off. I'm just showing you that. Uh, the water sp spraying out those. Okay, turn that back one on. Water will always come out the diaphragm and then the front one and then it stops, you know. Um, and then you're good. Right here I'm just showing you these bleeder valves. You don't have to open them, but I'm just showing you what they do. There's these two little valves. I think if you were, you could test this valve with, with these things, but I don't know how to do that. I've never done that. In fact, I've never used those bleeder valves at all, but I'm just showing you what they do. Put the caps on them. That's the only reason you'd need that screwdriver. And then dry off all the water from when you turned it on and the diaphragm shot a little bit out. Dry that up. Check thoroughly for leaks because you're going to wrap this pipe. You might even want to walk away for like five minutes and then come back. Make sure before you wrap it, you know. Get your wrap. It was a windy day, that's partially why I did a voiceover. But it's easier to kind of do this so I can just work and then I'll
come back later and just talk about what I'm doing. Okay, now we're just going to wrap it with some three quarter inch uh, pipe wrap insulation. And uh, you can do that however you want. <laughs> sometimes I cut the angle, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I cut a chunk out, you know. Doesn't matter. Just wrap it up. Get all the PVC wrapped up. That's exposed to the sun. And um, it's it's to protect it from UV rays, but it's also for the winter time. Uh, you know, maybe more so for the winter time to keep your pipes warm. A lot of people will wrap these valves in the winter time with like blankets, or they make like special covers for them because, uh, like I said, those diaphragms will burst, and the lines will burst because they're exposed, you know, above ground to the freezing temperature. So get it all covered up and then you're going to want to get some 10 mil tape I think it's 10 mil or 20 mil I believe it's 10 mil plumber's tape and then uh, tape it all up I mean a lot of this pipe wrap like this pipe wrap had sticky on it but every, you know professionally you'd wrap your insulation like this on this particular job it's kind of like the final touches Hey, baby. Thank you, bud. I believe it was a nice day, this day. Um, it's just now starting to get hot. It's May 20, let me see here. It's May 23rd. It's just now getting hot in Vegas. The cold stayed with us for a while. 2022. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. You're just kind of making sure that insulation stays on there good. Right. Be a little careful so you don't break the pipe, you know? I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> Yanking on the tape or something. All right, she's all taped up good. Clean up your mess and fill your hole back in. Make it look good, make the landscaping look good. And you are good to go. Job well done. You just saved yourself hundreds of dollars.